Hey, so in one of my recent lessons with a student, they were asking to go over 2024 AMC 10B problem 24. I'd actually never done this problem. I didn't film it last year. Um, I get kind of burned out uh, going into the contest. I've usually been working, you know, 60 plus hour weeks for a long time. I uh, don't usually take a day off from about August until November, mid-November. So sometimes I get done filming the first 15 of like the B test and I'm just like, that's it, I can't do it anymore. And I need a few weeks of recovery because it's a lot to do. So I never got to this one. I've never solved it, never even attempted it. And it reminds me of something that I tell you as well. A lot of you say, oh, this question was so misplaced or that question was. And if you watch my video on that called, there are no misplaced questions. Uh, it explains to you that never anywhere in the contest do they say in the rules the questions are supposed to go in order of difficulty. They don't claim that. They're not even necessarily trying to achieve that. If you're too stubborn to skip that number eight that's wrecking your day, that's your fault. These kinds of questions are waiting for you. If you've learned number theory, this question is, I think I took 45 seconds tops to answer the whole thing. And you know, you look at it and you think, if you don't know number theory yet, you might be wondering like what the best approach is, but let's get started. Let's just get a look at it. And if you don't know this content, I would recommend Intro to Number Theory, the textbook. Um, they've Modular arithmetic starts around chapter 12, uh, and that's what you're going to need for this problem. By the way, if you are interested in the small notebook class, it's not too late. You can watch the video from last week and join any one of the classes starting Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. I may do a mini small notebook class on the last weekend before the contest but I haven't decided yet, we'll have to wait and see. So uh, let's get started on this one. Let P of M equal M over two plus M squared over four plus M squared over eight plus M to the eighth over eight. How many of the values, P of this, P of that, and so on, are integers? And when I say and so on, that's exactly what you should be doing. You shouldn't be reading this like a novel. You don't need to read every word when it looks like that. You just go, that stuff that looks just like this, but different numbers. You don't have to pronounce it in your mind because you're trying to read quickly. The first thing is, this M up here is just this number. And so uh, for me, I'm going to look at this and go, how would I start? What would be my first action? And if I'm looking to show that this is an integer, then I would need all of these fractions when they're combined to seize being an integer. But this is four things to think about. Why don't I make one thing to think about? Then I only have to worry about one fraction. And that means if we simply combine these into one fraction, that's probably the first step that you would wanna take because it might simplify your reasoning process. So this needs a four and a four, that needs a two and a two. You're then going to have 4m plus 2m squared plus m to the fourth plus m to the eighth over eight. And it will look like that. Now, at that point, you now want to think, all right, what is this number in here? It is an m value. Well, I'm dividing by eight. Then what do I need this number up here to be? I need it to be divisible by eight. And in modular arithmetic, we say that it's congruent. We want it to be congruent to zero mod eight, which means that when we divide by eight, the remainder is zero. So how do I do that? Well, you don't want to plug this in. Good Lord, that would be terrible. Um, instead, you're going to want to find what is this equal to when it's divided by eight. You probably know that 2016 is a multiple of eight. Every thousand is and 16 is, so the 2,000 plus 16 would be that way, that means the remainder is six. Now, one of the neat tricks that you can do in modular arithmetic is you can go into the negatives. So you can make this congruent to negative two mod eight. And if I wanted, I could go also uh, farther this way and keep adding eight to get to 14 and 22 and so on. But how is this possible? What does it mean? Sorry, I've got a I've got my uh, retainers in, it makes me uh, have a little lisp. Um, what does it mean when we say it's congruent to negative two mod, mod eight? Um, we mean this, this number is eight times zero plus six, but this number is eight times negative one plus six. 
they're both six more than a multiple of eight. Of course, this one is a negative multiple of eight, negative one times eight, but I still add six to get to that number. Every number in the residue class that, uh, of 2022 will have that property. The nice thing about modular arithmetic is that now you can take this negative two and replace it in the M's and it will be the same result as if you had plugged in 2022. So if I do negative eight here, you can kind of just forget about it. It's already divisible by eight. If I have a big number like say, I don't know what would be good, uh, 832 plus seven, and this number is divisible by eight, but that one is not, then the whole number is not. The converse is also true. Is that the right word, converse? Um, if this number is divisible by eight and I added 16 instead, say that's a one six, now it would be because that number is and that number is. So in other words, because this is divisible by eight, four times negative two, we can just forget about it. It's now that term is, and I can add all the terms up and see how many are. If I put negative two in here, I'm squaring it. That's eight itself. This is going to be negative two to the fourth and negative two to the eighth, both of which will be divisible by two to the third, which is eight. So this one, yes, good. Next one, 2023. We don't have to rethink about it. It's just going to be congruent to negative one mod eight. And at this point, anybody with number theory experience is just off to the races. You're about 15 seconds from being done with the problem if you're quick with your concepts. So uh, I'll explain more for you though, if you're not sure about the concept, negative one is plugged into here and I'm going to get negative four. Negative one is plugged into here, I will get two, and then I will get plus one plus one. When I add these, I get zero and zero is divisible by eight. Zero is divisible by everything. So that counts as eight times zero, which is zero, a multiple of eight. And so then the next thing we would do, this one's good, this one is divisible by eight as is, and so it's congruent to zero mod eight. And now you're just going to take that value, plug zero into all of these. Obviously, it's going to be divisible by eight. It's again gonna give you zero. Finally, you get one mod eight right here, and you're just gonna plug one into all these. That's gonna change this to positive four, and I will add four and two to get six and seven and eight. And that also, yes, it's equal to eight, but eight, is congruent to zero mod eight. And so that's really it. That's all that you do. All four of them work. You get four. And if I'm not talking to you, this is a 30 to 45 second solve. That's it. This is why you don't do earlier problems that are ruining your day. If you're two minutes in and it's not going great, you're not admitting defeat. It does not mean the questions after that point are more difficult. Okay, so don't be stubborn. If it's not your cup of tea, let it aside. You can come back to it later. Take that piece of paper, set it to the side of your desk. Go look at all the rest of them. At least get about 30 seconds to a minute down a process like this. Within 30 seconds, this is gonna look like this, right? With less than that. You're looking at it and going, well, maybe my first thought, I combine it. You probably should take your first action, look at it, and then decide, do I have what it takes to be able to answer this? And if you know number theory, this question is a joke. If you don't know not number theory, in the vast majority of students who have not been prepping all year probably don't learn it because they don't learn it in school. So that's why it's probably number 24 for the average student taking it. It is kind of a challenging question, but for those of you that have been around the circuit and comp math for a while, it's something you should be quite familiar with. The two topics that you really want to study that may or may not be something you've seen is probability and number theory. Because number theory is not covered in school at all, unless you go to some specialized school, and probability is covered so light that it's not anything near a competition level. That's it for this one. See you in the next one.